Hello everybody, it's Dana Sullivan, the Stampin' Chick here for day 12 of the 13 days of Halloween treats. We are almost to the finish line. How are you today, my friends? I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. So I am here with day 12, and uh, as you can see, I brought in a little bit of humor in today's project. I absolutely love the Hey Chuck Stamp and Die bundle. And I thought, you know, he's got the look of screaming and shrieking. So maybe we'll use him in today's project. And the sentiment says, eat, shriek, and be scary. And you can see he's decked out in Halloween colors and he's running away screaming. So cute. I absolutely love it. All right, what I'm going to be using are uh, the Bag of Bones stamp set. I'm using this one right here, Eat, Shriek, and Be Scary. I love the fonts in here. I love the little curly cues and everything. I think it's so cute. Uh, I'm going to be stamping that in Gorgeous Grape ink, so you're going to want to have that on hand. I'm using the basic, um, not the basic Borders dies. Oh, my gosh. These are the basic Borders dies, but I'm using the Stylish Shapes. Um, the second largest of the circles right here is what I'm using for that background piece there. So I'll have that. And then, of course, I'm using Chuck, this little guy right here. Isn't he so cute? This stamp set is so much fun, and I absolutely love the character that comes out in these images. I think they're adorable. Okay. This bag is actually made from a half sheet of thick basic white cardstock. So I love that about it. You can make two of these bags per one sheet of paper. Let me bring my template over to show you for just a second. So this is what it looks like. You can feel free to uh, take your screenshot right quick. So this is done from an eight and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock. So eight and a half by five and a half. All right. So you can see there, we're going to do the first score line here at one inch. Okay. So we're going to score on the short side at one inch. And then we'll come across the long side and do three all the way down, three and a half to the line four all the way down and then seven all the way down seven and a half to the fold line and then eight all the way down okay so you can see that's making our tabs and our flaps for the bottom of the box or the bag these are the sides uh, front and back and these are the folded sides right there okay so let's go ahead and grab my simply scored board my um, stylus has gone MIA. It's on this table someplace. <laughs> I have such a hot mess going on here. And I'm going to use my uh, bone folder because, like I said, my stylus is MIA. So I'm going to score at one inch on the short side. Okay. And then I'm going to come around on the long side. I'm going to score at three inches all the way down three and a half to the line and then four inches all the way down I've created my first tab I'm gonna skip over to seven and come all the way down seven and a half will be to the line there we go and then eight is gonna go all the way down so now we have both of our tabs and both of our flaps both of our fronts and both of our sides. And then we have this little half inch strip that we're gonna use to connect the box together, okay? Let me get my scoreboard out of the way. Now we're gonna do a little bit of snipping, but we need to get these score lines burnished. So anytime you're doing a bag or a box, you really wanna give it a nice burnish. Okay, we're going to take the sides here, the front panel, and we want it to, to burnish in first, like that. We're going to take these folds, and we're going to make a mountain, a valley, 
and another mountain, all right? But now for this middle piece, you're not gonna do that one just yet. You're gonna come back over here to the outside edge of that side panel. So here's what I've got. I have the two lines that go all the way down burnished as mountains, okay? And then I can pinch right there, okay, like so, to make the valley on the side, all right? That's gonna give me my tab and it's gonna keep it nice and straight so that way I can um, make my bottom, okay? So again, with the side panel here, we're going to do this first. Okay, all right, now then, what I wanna do on either side of the square at the bottom, I want to make a tab. So I'm gonna cut and then miter, cut and then miter. Come here, friend. Okay. Cut, and then on this side, we're gonna miter, and then we're gonna come over to this rectangle and just meet it at the corner. So we're cutting that whole corner off, okay? Let me miter that. All right, now we have two mitered tabs, two flaps, and that corner gone, okay? Let me come in here and burnish this just a little bit. Okay, there we go. All right, now then, I wanna take some tear and tape and I'm gonna tear right up along the, um, I'm gonna apply it right up along the folded edge of that half inch flap. Okay, come here. So right up near the edge. You don't wanna go over the edge, but get close. Okay, grab my pokey tool and peel the backing off. There we go. All right, now I can fold the whole side in and then line up my edges just like that so I get a good, nice bag, okay? Now, this is my back flap, so I want to make the tab, or the flap here, go to the back as well. Now, because of the way that I've made the box, so that the sides and the front and back are the same size, we can take some multi-purpose liquid glue and put it all along that back flap that's gonna go down first, okay. And then fold our tabs in. This is gonna sandwich the tabs and it's gonna give us a really good clean finish on our bag down inside, okay? This is just one of those little extra touches you can do. All right, and then sandwich that just like so and then the inside of the bag is just as clean and beautiful as the outside, which I love. All right, we'll take our bone folder and we're gonna come down in here and just burnish that down really good. All right, and our bag is assembled, okay? Now, I have got some little um, Werther's Original Chewy Candies here, so let's just grab a handful and put them down in there. These things are so much fun and they're yummy. All right, I think that's probably about as good as we're gonna get. Okay, so that looks good. Well, we may have to take one out. It's not a really big bag. You could probably get a good half dozen or so little candies in there. All right, so there we go. All right, I'm gonna set that aside for just a minute. And the other pieces that I have here are uh, a piece of cardstock that measures two and seven eighths by four and three eighths. This is Granny Apple Green. I have a piece of designer series paper. This is from the Brights collection. And this measures two and three quarters by four and a quarter. And this is Parakeet Party. So you can see it's a little bit lighter 
then the granny apple green. There is my uh, second largest of the stylish, stylish shapes dies. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and it's in granny apple green as well. I've got into the pumpkin pie of the Brights collection and have punched it with the decorative circle punch. And then a piece of basic white cardstock that I have punched with the, what is that called? The lasting label punch. Okay. And then for the sake of time, I have gone ahead and stamped, colored, and cut Chuck. Now, I am not any kind of a uh, Stampin' Blends colorista by any means, so I'm not the one you want to follow for all of the incredible um, Stampin' Blends coloring details, so that's why I went ahead and just colored it myself without showing you. But uh, basically, this is Highland Heather, this is uh, Granny Apple, basic black pumpkin pie and a little bit of poppy parade and um, I do a little bit of shading and coloring as you can see it's really not anything spectacular so um, you know I am very simple when it comes to coloring so um, you can see here how I've done it okay all right let me go ahead and start assembling my pieces here First off, I need to attach my DSP to the cardstock. Okay. And then I'm going to take some of this ribbon. This is a two pack from the annual catalog. Uh, I can't remember what the name of it is, but it has a petal pink ribbon in it also. It's a really pretty little. Um, thin ribbon as well and uh, I'm going to tie this into a little bow okay so as I'm tying I want to pull it just a little bit to bow up so that when I get my bow tied here I won't be too slack if you have troubles getting your ribbon tight this is a fun little trick that really does work well if you don't lose the ribbon so I bow up my cardstock just a little bit, and that way, when I let loose of my bow, that sounded like a tongue twister, when I bow up my paper and then let loose of my bow, anyway, when I curl up my paper, whatever you want to call it here, and bring it in, and then it's snug around the paper, okay? So we'll bring this down cinch it up just a little bit okay and I want it to come down a bit as well all right just like so I can give it a snip here okay all right and then put some adhesive on oh come on now ribbon work with me All right, I really just want you to stay put. There we go. Okay, I'm going to put this right here on the front. You'll see that it lines up nicely, just a little bit of border all the way around. Okay. And then these pieces here are going to get glued together. So I'm just going to grab some Stampin' Seal and attach this layer right here like that and then i'm going to bring in my pierce mat because we're working with a photopolymer stamp got gorgeous grape ink right here and that eat shriek and be scary stamp okay bring it right over here I just tucked my fingernail in it, but that's okay because we're going to cover that up. <laughs> All right. Now then, I'm bringing in the little bat from the uh, Them Bones stamp set also, or Bag of Bones rather, I'm sorry. It's this little guy right here, okay? I'm going to bring him in and I'll put one there. 
and put one here and then I'm gonna cover that little oopsie just like that there we go no one will ever know that I stuck my fingernail in the ink pad except for you because I told you <laughs> all right now then let's go ahead and grab some Stampin' Dimensionals here so we'll put our Stampin' Dimensionals right there okay here we go all right and I'm going to bring it offset a little bit because we want to make room for Chuck too. Okay. So just like that. All right. Now then I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of this piece as well. That's how it's going to stick to the bag. Get that out of the way now. Okay, each tree can be scary. And basically I'm kind of lining it up with the top three sides of the DSP there. Okay, so if you're wanting to know, just, just up there towards the top, you know. All right, now Chuck is going to take a little bit of finagling. And what we want to do is we want to put Chuck right about there. And so I'm going to put... Uh, two layers of dimensionals on the back of his head. I'm going to put two layers of dimensionals on the back of his body and then one layer of dimension behind his tail. And the reason I'm doing that is because this label already has a set of dimensionals behind it. So to make his head the same level as the label, I need to put one layer of dimension. And then, because I want him raised up just a little bit more, I'm going to put another layer of dimension all the way around so that it pops him up off of the label a little bit. Okay? So, what I'm doing is I'm putting two layers of dimension right here on his head. I'm just going to stack two dimensionals right on top of each other. I'm going to put one layer of dimension on his tail. And then I'm going to grab my little minis because I'm going to be in a tight squeeze here. Let me see. Well, listen, creature. And then right there, before I stick it down too tight, just to make sure you don't see it. Perfect. Okay. One and then another. Okay, there we go. And then take the backings off here and here. And there we go. Come here, Chuck. Just like that. Now he's running away. Each tree can be scary. Ah! <laughs> okay, now then, we need something to close up the top of the bag. And I had some of these little clips left over. You can use little clothes pins from the Dollar Tree. Uh, you can use little binder clips, whatever you want to do. And I'm going to go ahead and just stick that on there. And then I'm taking a little bit of that black and white gingham ribbon. I'm going to go through the back piece here. Okay, and I'm going to tie a little knot. Nothing fancy, just a little added something something to decorate the little clip. Okay, that's it. Very easy. Just a knot. Okay, there we go. And then we want to snip snip to make the edges cute. 
There we go. All right, friends, and there you have it. Eat, shriek, and be scary with Hey Chuck. Love this little guy. Think that he is absolutely fantastic for this project. And I really like just, ah! I think it's great. <laughs> So I hope that you guys have enjoyed today's project and uh, join me again tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Time for day 13, the last day of the 13 days of Halloween treats. We will have this done in time for Halloween and you to be able to make some super adorable treats for all your little goose, ghosts and ghouls and all the fun stuff. So thank you guys so much for being with me this evening. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye for now.